Good morning. morning. <laughs> I was going to do something silly. I decided not to at the last second. Oh, no. So we do something silly anyway? <laughs> yes. So how did you sleep? Slept really good. Although I had one of those, um, you know, just as you're waking up, you're in the middle of a dream things today. Yeah. So that was a little... Uh, he had a dream that he needed to get something printed for some a client, and I had a dream that he bought a printer we didn't need, and I was annoyed about it. Right. So how weird is that? I don't know. How, that's really strange. Yeah. But uh, we did not go to the gym today. The reason being that when the guy who usually is, let, you know, the dictator about let's go to the gym. The dictator. Wow. Yeah. Snuggles up next to you and says, maybe we should go tomorrow. You say, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's that tough convincing, right? Yeah. So we'll go tomorrow instead. It's, you know, it's not a, a huge deal. Maybe it'll be a little warmer tomorrow, which would be nice. That would be very nice. So um, what do you have for breakfast? I'm having oatmeal. Mm-hmm. I am having, I had all the, you know, the sunflower seeds, the um, pumpkin seeds, the hemp seed, the chia, chia seeds, the spirulina, the aimla, but aimla in today, mm -hmm. blueberries, banana, and I've already had a whole grapefruit, um, cashews, and persimmons, is that what they are? Persimmons, yeah. Persimmons, like, like um, sun-dried persimmons, about, I don't know, four or five wedges. Slices. Slices, yeah. yeah. And I have a lunch meeting today, so as you know, my go-to lunch when I uh, breakfast when I have early lunch meetings is an apple with some peanut butter, natural uh, peanut butter, organic, yeah. and I'm going to have some grapefruit as well. So that's what I'm going to have for lunch today, since I have a lunch meeting mm -hmm. at 11:45, which we usually don't eat lunch till two or three. So I'm going to go easy on the lunch, and I may end up eating oatmeal for dinner. Dinner, yeah, <laughs> no. I was going to say that. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> So um, I wanted to share with you guys, I, you guys know I'm taking a class right now to get my certification in uh, plant-based nutrition. The class, the class that I'm taking currently is called Diseases of Affluence. Right. So I've been, uh, been studying cancer and heart disease and diabetes. Let me read what Kristen's reading. Above freezing, yay! Yeah. That's always preferable, right? Yes. Um, so... I finished the section on uh, cancers and, and the section on um, heart disease. I just need to do the written part for the heart disease. And then I'm going to start the diabetes one next. Um, if you want to see, I had to write a one page summary of it for the uh, cancer food, how food in, influences the growth of cancer in our bodies. And I did post that in, a, in total, everything I wrote on the r, r journey page. It's a tiny bit academically dense because it does reference um, the actual science, but I do think that it is worth reading if, if you're willing to take the time to read it. It's one page, which I know is a long post. Facebook post, yeah. but it's a really short academic paper. Yeah. So I would highly encourage you to go and read that. It is not academically referenced. So if you want the actual studies that I do reference in there, um, feel free to ask me. I will definitely send you the, the study, the names of the studies and when they were done. I do reference the names of the authors so you can Google them and find out you know, who the doctors are that did the research and decide for yourself whether you want to um, believe what they found or not. But that is on the r, r Journey page. So if you're interested in, in more in depth than I give you here today, please go and, and read that. Um, I, got, I got an A 100% on it. So it's a Cheats are approved. Yes. <laughs> so Stand. feel free to go uh, take a read of that. But the the one study, there's a couple of studies that were really interesting that I'll reference real quickly. One was done um, with rats and um, protein, milk protein. And they found that if you expose rats to a carcinogen, a cancer-causing agent, and then you feed them 20% protein, milk protein, the cancer grows. Right. If you feed them 5% protein, milk protein, the cancer grows doesn't grow. And you can turn it on and off by either feeding 20% or 5%. So I thought that was interesting. And I thought this was a really, really telling statistic. If you expose rats to a liver carcinogen, at high levels, they get high level tumors. At low levels, they get low level tumors. That would be expected. But you can expose rats at high levels of carcinogen and feed them a low protein diet and they get low level of tumors. Or you can expose them to high, uh, low levels of carcinogen, so they should get low level tumors, but feed them high levels of protein and they get high levels of tumors. So it, the, the amount of protein they eat makes it cross, which I thought was just right. crazy. And rats typically live about 100 weeks, that's their lifespan. And they found that in this study, rats that were on 
um, the high level protein at 100 weeks, 100% of them were dead. Mm. At 100 so, weeks, the ones that were yes. on low level protein, all 100% were alive. Right. And for me, like that's not even like 85% or some. No, no all. They were either all dead so, or all alive. Right. It's either on or off. There is no, uh, no, middle no ground. dim switch. Right. And yeah. the one doctor said, and this to me was shocking. The one doctor said that if milk casein, which is the protein found in milk, was measured the way we measure most carcinogens, it would be the most highly carcinogenic substance we've discovered thus far. Right. That to me was shocking that he that that was the claim that he made. And again, like we've learned before, is that cow's milk is awesome for calves, for baby cows. That's what it's meant for. Right. It's not awesome for humans. Right. So that was that was super interesting to me. Um, the difference in response. So let me see. I got to find. Oh, and they talked about androgenesis, which is a really big annoying word. And what it basically means is the growth of blood vessels. And in cancer cells, they send out a, um, a, a signal called VEGF, if you want the science, called VEGF, that says, hey, I need blood vessels. Now, your body usually uses growth of blood vessels when it's injured. If it needs to fix something, that's when it uses it. And then when it's better, it trims them back. Mm -hmm. And what cancer can do, the when it gets turned on, is it never turns the signal off. And so it just gets lots and lots of blood flow. And so they're finding that if you can stop the blood flow and block the VEGF that cancer cells send out, you can kill the cancer. And there are a lot of drugs approved for that, um, but they're definitely finding that there are many foods, plants, that inhibit the, the growth of VEGF. And so I thought that that was interesting. The more plants that we eat, the better off we are. And the interesting thing on top of that is that take pharmaceuticals have bad side effects. Eat plants have good side effects. Right, exactly. You know? so, hey, Sean, good to see you. Good morning, morning Pat. Good to morning, see you. Morning, Pat. Um, I was going to say something and I forgot what it was. Oh, did I do that too? No, it's not your fault. Uh, it's all good. Um, I'll, I'm sure I'll find it again. It's not a big deal. Oh, I know what it was. So there, the doctors that study this cancer and plants thing are really adamant that we are not slaves to our genes. Cancer is not something that you just get and you're stuck that you're stuck with it. You right. have no control. Um, every one of us, and I didn't, I guess I kind of knew this at some level, but cancer cells, cells that become the disease that we call cancer, happen all the time in our right. bodies. 99.9% .9 of, of the time, your body is able to just kill it and say, oh, that's, that's broken, don't need that. And it's a non-issue. So we, we were talking this morning about how our bodies, our whole lives, are doing all these war. amazing yeah. things to just keep us alive. Right. And one of them is killing off those broken cells. And every once in a while, it's like 99.9% .9 of them get dead. But every once in a while, there's one cell that the body misses, and that cell is able to replicate. Right. And once it replicates, that becomes a permanent, a permanent part of, of who you are because you can't unreplicate it. Like right. once it's done, it's done but you can control it. And that's what your body can do if you give it the right fuel, is those little, they're not even clusters, they're just tiny little pea spots. Like, they're, I think they said they're the size of a ballpoint pinhead that just sit there and they're not anything. They're not damaging. Your body just is like, that's annoying, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> just bypass that guy, ignore him. Right, and it never becomes anything because okay. it doesn't get blood vessels, so it can't grow. Right. And your body just, you know, it's just there. But if your body is constantly fighting um, other issues like trying to pr process protein, meat proteins, and that kind of thing, it it doesn't it tends to ignore that right. this stuff is going it's on. It's the analogy that Dr. Greger gave in, in his talk there, where if you bang your knee against a table and you let it heal, it heals and everything's great. But if you keep banging your knee against that same table every single day, you're going to have a serious problem. Right. right? It's kind of the same theory. Exactly. Yeah. If you keep damaging it. Mm -hmm. um, I'll have to look at eczema. I don't have any research on it, but I will look into it, Sean, and see if I can find anything on that. Um, so, yeah, and there was a, there's a study that they do. And apparently, if you put a blood pressure cuff on your arm and you, you can measure with, there's a, I don't know what it's called, but there's a little thing you can measure the dilation of the blood vessels. So you measure it put the blood pressure on, leave it on for five minutes, take it off, and the dilation should be about 30%. And so they did a study where they did this, healthy, normal, great people, okay. So then they split them into two groups. They fed one group cornflakes, 
and then they fed the other group um, a sausage biscuit and can't Ooh. remember what the other thing was. He said hash, brown. hash browns, yeah, maybe. Hash brown. He said it was from the place with the arches of golden. <laughs> right. They didn't want to mention it. They just said that's where it's from. So that was funny. And then they studied them again. The people who had cornflakes, still normal, no problem, no whatever. The people who ate the sausage and the hash browns, their their um, arteries and veins weren't dilating anymore. And I so one meal, and suddenly it's not dilating properly right. anymore. And but you know, over time, as they followed them into the night, it got better. But the problem is, if you're eating this stuff, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, your body never gets a chance to overcome it. Right. So for me, that was that was pretty telling. That one meal is enough to really damage things if you if you then have one meal over and over and over. Right. Keep doing yeah. it to yourself. Yeah. And you know, eating real food, eating whole foods, can change you for the better, lower your cholesterol, all that in as little as 10 days. Mm -hmm. The studies are just amazing. Yes, yeah. It's, and we've seen that time and time again, what I used to talk about, they changed their diet and this great thing happened. By the way, it was 10 days or two weeks or right. you know, three weeks. It's never like you know, a year later or two years later. So it's just, and I, and I told you this this morning too, that I always felt, and when I was bodybuilding, I learned some, some of the stuff I read back then is, the body's a remarkable machine. Mm -hmm. It is the most efficient machine that, that man can even dream about creating such a machine, right? right? And we will heal ourselves given the opportunity. You know, so if you're a smoker and you've not gotten any kind of disease from it and you stop smoking, your lungs, what was it that said that the lungs go, um, and I don't forget the amount of time, I don't want to exaggerate, but whatever the period of time was, that the lungs of a um, smoker, was it 15 years? It was a long time. It was like 15 years of non-smoking, your lungs are the same as somebody who has never smoked. But it takes time. It you takes have to give time. Your, time, your body a right. break. It's when you pass that threshold of it's too late right. that, you know, it doesn't matter if you stop at that point, it's too late. And um, so a lot of people are saying, oh, well, you know, we can just eat the extracts. We can take supplements and that'll right. help. And so they actually provided some science on that, which I thought was, was super interesting. Um, they did some, a study on the vitamin C-like activity provided by half a cup of apple. And what they found was that 100 grams of apple, which is about half a cup, has 263 times the, the, as potent as the same amount of, as an isolated chemical. Mm -hmm. So while we think it's the vitamin C that does it, it's actually the synergy between everything that's in the yeah. apple. And um, this doctor made the point that there's 8,000 bioactive components in whole food that have synergistic effects on cancer prevention, and there's no way we can study 8,000 things and understand all their interactions. But fortunately, we don't have to understand it. We just have to eat, eat real it. food. <laughs> <laughs> you so eat it, you get it. Don't worry that's, about that's it. That's pretty straightforward. Yeah. So I won't get into heart disease today because that'll be, that'll be long. I can talk about heart disease next week. But then the, the question that was then asked is, if we know this, I mean, this science has been around 30 to 50 years that they've been studying this and they've seen these results. If this is known science and there's so much evidence for it, why aren't doctors uh, telling us? Why aren't they giving us the option to change our diets? Yeah. And so there's a couple of different reasons. One is, we said before, doctors don't know because they're not taught this. They get maybe 20 hours of nutrition and this is not what they get. So they don't know. So we have to give them, a, you know, cut them a break on that. Doctors don't know. They can't tell you what they don't know. Right. But I, so my question was, so if doctors that are in the labs with these people doing this, they know it, why aren't they telling their people? And they, they did um, a study and kind of interviewed them and asked that question. And their response was, because people won't do it. So I just won't bother to tell them. Mm -hmm. And well, it is true. There are some people who won't do it. Right, but you should give them the opportunity. But I that think decision. that we should give people the opportunity yeah. to make the decisions to take ownership of their health themselves. And that means, at least for me, that means give me the data, tell me what it says, and let me make the choice. And I guess that's what we're trying to do is just give you guys the information and then help you if you want to make this choice of going um, more toward plant-based of what that looks like right. and being able to add more plants and reduce the amount of meat you're taking in. And I'm not saying you have to be 100%. We started out at about 80%. And you know we're, we're, we're moving closer and closer to the 100% mark, though. The more we learn, the more we're like, eh. And I don't, and I don't even think you have to be apes. And I'm, to me, and listen, this, maybe I'm wrong. This is the way I look at it. If you give somebody something, and says, you know, just try a little something. And they start feeling better from it. 
isn't it natural for them to say, well, I mean, we do it with bad things. So if I do this good thing and I feel a little bit better, what if I do a little bit more? Am I going to feel a bit better still? And, yeah. and it just starts, you know. Um, snowballing. Snowballing. Thank you. Uh, and I think that is the way, you know, most people should approach it. Maybe how a doctor should approach it. Just sit there and say. Try this one thing. You know, I want you to right. add a cup of, I don't know, you know, a baked potato a day or, you know, a, a cup of corn a day or something. I don't know, anything. And then as they start feeling better, they can say, you know, what else can I do? And, I, and to me, it's human nature. And I, maybe I'm wrong. Cause it's certainly human nature to do that with bad stuff. <laughs> right. You know, I mean, if I do a drug and I do a little bit of a drug, I get high. Let me do a little more drugs and get higher. Right. If I drink a little bit of alcohol, I get high. Let me drink a little bit more alcohol and I'll get even higher. And I think that if we can do that for bad habits, we can do it for good, we can do it for good habits as well. Yeah. Makes sense. So it's worth a try. Um, to the question about supplements, it's interesting because um, that's an argument a lot of people use is, oh, our bodies can't absorb it. I did a, um, a whole post about, uh, we did a video about um, iron and we did one about calcium as well. And it's interesting that a, it's, it's not necessarily true. Our bodies do absorb what it, what it needs always. Like that's the way we were designed to absorb exactly what we need. But absorbing more is not necessarily better. More mm -hmm. can be toxic. And that we, they found that, um, I'll use iron as a reference, is that the iron that's in red meat is easier to absorb. Your body takes in more of it. But the problem with that is your body then cannot regulate how much iron it's getting because it, it's too easy to, for it to get in. Right. Whereas the iron that's in plant foods, um, green leafy vegetables, flax seeds, all of them, everything has iron in it basically. If it grows in the ground, it has iron right. in it. Um, a little more difficult for your body to, to access, but much better for you in that it is able to regulate it and use it m more effectively. That's the science that I have found. So. The other thing about supplements is they're processed and they have to use chemicals. To cre you don't create those things naturally. Natural, That's not yeah. how it works. They have to they use chemicals. They don't just chemicals. crush something up and put it in that. Yeah. Right. So it's not only, and from what I've read, is it not as good for you, but it is a chemically processed thing. Right. It is a processed food. And, you know, we know, we've been told our whole lives, I say this all the time, it's not news that plants are good for us. Eat your fruits and vegetables. It's not we've news. We've been told that our whole lives. But for some reason, we get, our, we get in our brains that, you know, we have to eat this other junk and it's easy and whatever. And that's unfortunate. Right. So I would definitely say everything I've read from all the doctors that I've read, the science that I've read says, as long as you're eating a wide variety of plants, which I eat more variety now than I ever did before we went plant-based, there is no way you can be nutrient deficient. And it's interesting that we worry as a society about nutrient <laughs> deficiency, when in reality, the disease is excess. Right, right. So We're worried about our society, but then we tend to eat foods that are uh, nutrient poor. Nutri yeah, calorie yeah. dense, nutrient poor. Right, yeah. which is just bizarre, but that's what we do. So, Welcome to the Western society. It, it's interesting. Again, I did. I had to write a one-page paper about um, cancer and food, and I posted it on the r, r Journey page. So if you want to actually see like who did the studies in a little more detail, go and read that. It's one page. Um, it's a little dense for Facebook, but it's actually a pretty easy read, I you think. Should, you should see her after she's taken a class, and she's so excited. Let me tell you what I learned. And I'm like, okay, what would you learn? I do. It's very cool. <laughs> so... Um, I did the heart disease um, sessions yesterday. I spent all day learning about heart disease. I have to write the paper for that one, and if I if I get a good grade on it, I will uh, I'll post that. If as she well. gets a good grade, folks. In other words, if she doesn't get a ninety nine point nine 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 nine, because then she'll be disappointed. <laughs> It'll be fine. Right. And then this weekend, I'll be learning about um, diabetes and food, so we'll share that as well. Absolutely. But um, that's what we have for you today. I hope that you find it useful. Um, I hope that if nothing else, it makes you think yeah. about what you're, what you're feeding your body and the opportunity you have to control your health morning, that's more and more what I'm learning. Good morning, David. We have the opportunity morning, to control our destiny when it, become, when it comes to our health by deciding what we eat. And that's a decision you have 100% control over. So exactly. I yeah. won't reach at you anymore, although I'm trying to because I the do. The Bible is down. <laughs> I do talking about this stuff. Um, but yeah, and, and again, I'll just I'll just uh, add to that by just saying baby steps. You know, it's, it's a simple term. Take one step at a time. 
Try one meal. Try one day. Try one, you know, one week. Eat oatmeal. <laughs> Eat oatmeal every morning. It's a great thing. I do it. Um, you know, or add oatmeal or I don't know, anything. But just try it one step at a time. And as you feel yourself feeling better, you, you'll want to do you'll more. You'll want to do more. I mean, that's the bottom line. And you'll eventually you'll even find yourself doing intermittent fasting. I mean, <laughs> I've been a body I've been around gyms and bodybuilding and playing sports, you know, as an adult for the, almost 40 years. Actually, a little bit over 40 years because I'm 41. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and I got to tell you, I'm actually aggravated that I didn't have this knowledge back in the day. I know, right? You know, it's like, why was this being held for me? And I, when I was bodybuilding, I did a lot of research. I did a lot of reading. Yeah. Um, the guy I trained with, uh, with um, Rich Gaspari, he was a biology student um, at Rutgers, and he was—I mean—he was getting the actual detailed information. It's just sad that, that it was the, wrong. That the information being taught, even though they had the right information, they chose to teach a different, a different yeah. knowledge, as it yeah. were. And so, so, you know. Yeah. So I'm excited to be able to use this knowledge to help people who want to be healthy. If you don't want to be healthy, then you know it's I don't want to help I mean, you. That's yeah, okay. Yeah. We're not into fighting a battle. That's not the point. No, not my gun. I'm not going to force anybody to do anything. But if you want the information, we're happy to share it. We're happy to help any way we can. So Absolutely. I think with that, we're going to go eat breakfast because yes. I have to get to my meeting later. Um, do you want to say bye? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we will end it by saying eat real food, not too much, mostly, mostly plants. plants. Have, have a great a good day, weekend. Guys. We'll see you Monday.